Hello CS124 students, this is part two of the help session for the Life Lab. I'm going to be talking about run length encoding, parsing strings in C, and a few other things you need to do to set up. Run length encoding is an important thing to understand. It's a very simple, widespread form of data compression. It's often used in compressing image files, and since our life patterns are really just black and white images formed by living and dead cells for pixels, RLE is a practical method of storing those images. Your function draw RLE pattern is supposed to take the long strings of gibberish you see in lifelib.c and turn it into a pattern in your life grid. Here's how that works. Each cell can be turned into a char representation of being alive or dead. Cells that are alive are represented by B, and dead cells are represented by O. If we rewrite our pulsar with this pattern, we get a box of characters. We could store that in a big two-dimensional array, but it's much more efficient to store it in a string, so we'll add a dollar sign to the end of each row to indicate a new line of the pattern. Now we can reorganize the big box into one long string. This is essentially like an uncompressed image file. Every pixel of our pulsar is stored in our string. Now we can do some data compression. If we've properly cleared our grid before drawing patterns on it, we can skip rows of dead cells because they should be dead already. You can see that we have long runs of O's, B's, and dollar signs. Instead of storing every single one separately, we can count the number of identical chars that occur in a row and store that instead. Now our string looks like the strings in lifelib.c. Lifelib.c also gives us a little more information though. In addition to live and dead cells, the patterns also know their dimensions on the grid. That will be important later. The rule is only important if you are doing a high life implementation for extra credit, so I won't go over that. For this lab, there are four configurations of patterns we're calling seeds. These are defined in the init life function, and they call the draw RLE pattern function you are supposed to write. So let's go look at the function we need to work on. We can see that it takes in three parameters, the row, the column, and the pattern to be drawn. The row and column here are the location we are supposed to draw the pattern at. However, this location is at the bottom left corner of the RLE pattern. As you saw earlier, our patterns are intended to be drawn from the top left across like a book. So where we actually need to start drawing from is the row plus the y dimension minus one. Let's figure out how to get that y dimension out of our string. The first problem we run into is that the strings have not been set up as char arrays in lifelib.c. They are arrays of uint eights instead. So if you try to use the website information on parsing char arrays right off, it won't work. Fortunately for us though, the data that is stored in those arrays is identical for char arrays and uint eight arrays. So all we have to do is cast our uint eight pointer into a char pointer. Now we can use this char pointer to iterate. We don't need to worry about the width, so the first thing we want to look for is the char y. All we have to do is set up a while loop. Once we have the y, we know the next number in the string is the height of our object, so we can use this isDigit function and create another while loop just like in the example. You must include cc type for it to work, otherwise the program starts doing weird things without telling you why. Now we're looking at the number in our char array, and we need to get it into a variable so that we can use it. Again, the example code has the answer for us. This while loop works to get numbers of any length out of a string. We need to start with a variable initialized to zero, then this while loop will run. As long as the pointer is looking at a number, it will take what is already in that variable and multiply it by 10, then add the next digit. As long as you're working in base 10, this preserves the place value of each digit. Now that we've got the height of the pattern, we can add the row coordinate given to us in the parameters, and we're ready to start drawing the pattern. We don't need any of the rest of this information, so let's look for the new line character next. Now what we're going to encounter from our string are b's, o's, and dollar signs, possibly with a number preceding them. If there's a number, you'll need to get that out first. I'd recommend putting it in a variable, and then if there isn't a number, you can just set the number to 1. Then when we hit the char, we can use while loops to do our work for us. Don't forget to increment your column value as you finish with each cell and reset the column value on a new line. Remember that the patterns write like we read English, left to right, and then a new line, and left to right. I'd recommend doing your testing with the pulsar. It's the most prone of all our patterns to go wrong, so if your function has any bugs, the pulsar will be the most likely to catch them for you. That's the basics for our RLE patterns, so best of luck to you all.